grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, New Life, New People. That's the title for our series in the letter that Paul writes to the Ephesians. And I think it's pretty appropriate that here in the second part of chapter 4 into the first part of chapter 5 today, in the middle of this series, we're kind of starting to get to the back half of our series together, uh, that all of a sudden we have a day of baptism for Lydia. And, and of all things, there's this new life question that you all answered already this morning. You, you answered on behalf of Lydia. You also got to answer it for yourself. You ready for the question? Do you renounce the devil? and all his works, and all his ways. Those words are at the heart, at the heart of our baptismal liturgy, but also at the heart of Ephesians chapter 4, what Paul is getting at today. And of all things, while they're not explicitly written in this text, you don't see those words, do you renounce the devil and all his works and his ways, not in Ephesians 4, but they stand behind also the walk of love that Paul puts before us and exhorts us to take this morning. So, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? My answer, I do. Absolutely. 100%, I renounce them personally as a, not just pastor, but as a, a follower of Jesus along with all of you. That's my answer, and, and I confess it boldly today, and I want to keep on confessing it because I think for me personally, it matters. But here's what I know. And I find as a disciple, as soon as I answer affirmatively, 100%, I renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways, it turns into an absolute struggle for me to keep on walking as a disciple of Jesus. See, on the one hand, I want to renounce all those former ways of darkness that Paul points out, that Jesus brought me from in my baptism. I want to do that. I want to renounce those things. And when Jesus says, I'm the light of the world in our gospel reading, Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I say absolutely yes. 100%, Paul, Jesus, sign me up. I want to be part of that. And then all I got to do is look into my past week, and I can see that time that in the dark I went into my boy's room and I stepped on a Lego. Have you ever stepped on a Lego in the dark with bare feet? Uh, My frustration boiled over, and and it didn't go so well. Um, I know I wasn't patient as I should have been with some people this week. I know uh, I had a little bit of worry and anxiety about a few things that probably turned into some, some sinful anxiety because I was trying to control some things. I know that happened in my life. And my list could go on and on. When we gathered here last Sunday, we heard the name of God, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I, I received that reminder again. Uh, Jesus reminded me that in my baptism, my old self was put off. I received new clothing, righteousness, and holiness. And I stepped back into that, and then I started living out my week, and that truth got really, really complex to live out. That's why I like that one of our values here at St. Luke is, is faithfulness to complex truth. Because soon as I try to walk with my new clothes in baptism, holiness and righteousness, uh, it's really challenging. So here's one example of how it went for me this week. I woke up in the morning, I had two cups of coffee. That's about perfect. Maybe you need a little bit more. I needed two that day. And I sat down with my Bible Gateway app, and I read my devotion on 1 Timothy. And it was all about love, and it was great, and I was ready to go. I mean, I was a Jesus follower, ready to go and love people. And then I had a conversation with someone who told me about what someone else had done for like the fifth time, and I was pretty certain that this was about the end of the rope. So I have to say, there was probably some bitterness in there that crept in because it was like the fifth time that they did the same thing. And then I probably had a little bit of anger in there. Maybe that even spun thoughts that didn't belong to my walk as a follower of Jesus. And all of a sudden, what I knew of myself, loved by Jesus, righteous, holy through my baptism, it felt like it all got thrown out the door. Huh. So I'm not trying to turn this into a personal confessional this morning by any means. What I'm trying to help you understand is that pastors are no different. We're in this journey together. No one journeys alone. And this is a struggle to live the picture that Paul paints for us today. I want you to know it's a challenge for me as well because looking back each and every day, I am constantly surprised at how quickly I can exchange my brand new clothing 
in baptism for old, dirty, soiled clothes. I don't mean to, but it happens as I try to follow Jesus. If you ever thought that following Jesus was a steady uphill climb toward perfection, I got news for you. I can see how false that is in my own life. And yet, I also know that this baptismal life that I've called to is real, and I was actually able to walk in love for people this last week. Um, I actually was able to bless some people with kindness and tenderness, I think. Um, I was even able to be angry a couple times without sinning and put my baptismal clothes back on and, and continue to wear those. And it went like that, up and down, up and down, sometimes more down than up, and I think you get that. That's my life. It's super hard, and I think you know that because it's your, it's your life too, isn't it? each and every day. So I want to ask you a question, St. Luke. Again, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, say, we do renounce them. You're so Lutheran and you're so good at responding. And you know what? You actually mean it. You do. It's been shaped in you by Jesus. You actually mean that you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways. When Paul says in Ephesians 4 today, now this I say and testify in the Lord. You must, you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. As a church, we say together absolutely, 100%. Paul, you're right. When he goes on to say, put off St. Luke, like the Ephesians, your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirits of your mind, put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness, you can look back this morning to that moment when with Lydia, you heard the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, where you put off your old self and you put on the new self, righteousness, holiness. Those are the marks of your baptismal life, and you're ready to walk again, aren't you? And then you know how complex that's going to be to go and to live out. So maybe that's why what Paul pictures then in the second part of our reading today is so relatable. Did you notice how Paul describes the walk after having put off the old self and put on the new, the walk that we are to have in Jesus? It's not just what it shouldn't look like. He doesn't spend a bunch of time saying, all you bad people at St. Luke, don't do this. He actually says, don't do this. And this is what it's supposed to look like. He couples both negative and positive, I think, for a reason. So he says this, Be angry and don't sin. Let the thief no longer steal, but on the other hand, let him do good to others, wholesome work for the blessing of others. On the one hand, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth. On the other hand, let talk come out that builds each other up. On the one hand, let all bitterness and wrath, anger and clamor, slander be put away along with all malice. Those are strong, strong words that that get at speech and thoughts and heart and how we interact with each other. And on the other hand, he says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. And here's the thing. We get both sides of that, don't we? We know what it is to be on both sides. As the body of Christ, we can vacillate sometimes wildly between the old self and the new, the old walk we ought never have gone back to, and and then living in righteousness and holiness toward each other. We have an amazing capacity as the body of Christ to be angry at sin in this world and in our own lives because we love each other and this world that deeply. That's something Jesus shapes in us. And then we also have an amazing capacity to turn that anger at sin into sinful self-absorption that seeks destruction of someone else instead of loving restoration back and forth. We have an amazing capacity to do good for each other and then an amazing capacity to turn right around and yank it back in pettiness. It's part of our, our walk, it seems. We can be so good at being kind and tender-hearted to each other and forgiving, then turn right around and poison the room with bitterness, cut each other with words, fly off in wrath, speak to somebody with malice. I hope you don't have any illusions that this discipleship journey you're on is the straight upward climb toward perfection. Just wait till the next couple hours, and that's going to be dispelled for you quite easily. 
in Paul's letter, not to the Ephesians, but to the Romans, he has some pretty strong words to say about who we are. Uh, You may recognize some of these. Paul talking about how big of a struggle it is for him personally as he gives you a window into his life, confesses the power of sin that trips him up, and he says, you know, the good that I want to do, that's the very thing I can't do. But the evil, sinful things that I don't want to do, those are the things that I end up doing so often. It's frustrating for him. You can hear it in his voice. He even calls himself a wretched man. And we know that, and we know it's true even for us. In fact, one of our old Lutheran liturgies in the Confession has us say these words, I, a poor, miserable sinner. Some of you know those words. And that reflects something about who we are spiritually. We cannot take a step toward God. We have no righteousness to bring before him. We can't earn our salvation. We are dead apart from his gifts of grace. And that is true. But that is not what Paul is getting at today. Not in Ephesians. That belongs to his argument in Romans. Today, Paul actually details out how we should walk. And here's the thing. He assumes, of all things, that we can actually do it. In five, chapter 5, verse 1, he says, y'all be imitators of God. And he's not just rubbing it into our faces, holding up an impossible picture to say, St. Luke, you'll never get this, so you poor, miserable sinners, you better just fall down on your knees. That's not what he's doing. He actually assumes that the kind of walk he's describing is actually what's going to happen for you. So how can Paul... Assume that when we know what our lives are like each and every day so very well. Well, as it's been so far in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, it stands again today. Paul's assumption about our walk is not rooted in our ability to take one step in perfection or in failure. Paul's assumption is absolutely rooted for you in the promises and the work of God. It's an absolute struggle, but can I tell you something, St. Luke? Y'all were sealed by the Holy Spirit in your baptism. You belong to God. You are sealed for the day of redemption, Paul says here in Ephesians chapter 4, and that is a pledge and a promise from God for you. It's what he gives you today. St. Luke, you have been forgiven and will continue always to be forgiven by God through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ fully free and forgiven. That's you. It's his pledge and his promise to you. It's what he gives you. And in the middle of your struggle with the old self, the old sinful self, you are completely loved by Jesus, who Paul says gave himself up for you. The promises and the actions of God are yours. You, St. Luke, are loved by a Jesus who has anger over sin that was so great he wasn't willing to let this world or you continue to struggle in it any longer. It's why he offered up his sinless life for yours so that, St. Luke, you might be made absolutely holy, pure, and spotless. It's his promise to you. You are loved by Jesus who pours goodness out upon you beyond measure. It's a gift for you even and especially on your worst day as a follower of Jesus And then he shapes you right back to be his righteousness to all those around you. You are loved by Jesus who is so tender-hearted toward you, so kind to you, even when you feel like or you actually are absolutely unlovable. And it's his love alone that makes you holy and spotless again. And you all are loved by Jesus who first took you in your baptism like Lydia experienced today, and by the power of his spirit, removed the old self, put, you, uh, put on you new baptismal clothing, white and pure holiness and righteousness, and gave you that gift that he continues to put back on you each and every day as you put off the old self and put on the new. New clothing, new love, new righteousness. It's yours. It's all a gift for you, St. Luke. It's a gift. And what Paul assumes today about your walk flows out of all those gospel promises, all of that love. It's a walk of love that Paul sees for you that's actually possible because of the power of the Spirit who has sealed you to the day of redemption. So, when Paul says, hey, St. Luke, in 2018, 
keep on being imitators of God, well, it's a continual walk he's pictured. And it's your specific calling as those sealed by the Spirit, forgiven by God, and loved by Jesus. And as you do that, as you step into this walk, I want you to hear these words from Martin Luther, from this little work that he wrote called Defense and Explanation of All the Articles. Luther talked about this up and down kind of life, walking in love. He says, this life, therefore, is not godliness, but the process of becoming godly. It's not health, but getting well. It's not being, but becoming. It's not rest, but exercise. We are not now, Luther says, what we shall be, but we're on the way. The process is not finished, but it is actively going on. This is not the goal, but it is the right road. At present, everything does not gleam and sparkle. And I think you'd say it this way, but in Jesus, everything is being cleansed. What Luther describes and Paul knows and you live out each and every day is this. We have been made holy and are continually being conformed and shaped to the image of Christ for the sake of others. Yes, sin still clings, but it is forgiven always in Jesus. And then it's from that grace that you actually, St. Luke, you actually get to go out and love other people in the way that God has first in Jesus loved you. So, as you start to think about what that is, take a peek back into your last week. Where did you put on your baptismal clothing and love the people around you? Where did you walk in love and live that out coming from all of the promises of Jesus this last week? It didn't take long for me to look back into the week to see some pretty significant examples, I think, of what I saw of this walk. Um, I want to share this with you. I saw this past week a husband who chose to love his wife in a way that blew my mind. Uh, she was struggling, his wife. I mean, really, really struggling. And it wasn't the first time. And in the room, he could have kind of done anything, succumbed to bitterness, because it wasn't the first time. He could have kind of given up. But what I watched was a spirit Holy Spirit sealed man of God who was wearing new baptismal clothing get up from his chair and walk over to his wife and place his hands on her shoulders. I'm not sure it had happened in a while. And as he did that, I watched this woman receive safety and security and comfort and love and something shifted in the room and his hands in that moment were covered with righteousness and holiness. They were the hands of Jesus for his wife. And I think they're going to be up and down still this coming week, but in that moment, it was significant and it was precious watching this husband and how he treated with tender kindness his wife and loved her. It was amazing. I saw the same thing happen in a mom this week who had gone through the entire week of chaos in her life and she was tired and it was evening and she just wanted a break to be by herself and instead... She put all that aside to hold a young woman who was also struggling with some things. And sitting there holding this young woman and stroking her hair and speaking sweet stories to her, I watched that, I watched that girl's cares start to melt away. I watched her start to yawn to get to the place where she could finally go to sleep. And Jesus used that mom to be the righteousness of God in that little girl's life to bring kindness and peace and comfort. You know what she was doing? She was wearing baptismal clothing, even if she didn't recognize it, and she was imitating God. And I also saw it in a group of Jesus followers who were talking about how close they were together. They're like a family. And they were talking about how exciting that was and how they feel so loved and, and supported. And a gentleman who was actually in the room said, I don't feel that at all in my church. And he confessed that he felt isolated and alone and lonely. And they had a choice. They could have ignored it and kept going, assuming I was going to talk to him. What they did was amazing. They stopped their conversation. They engaged him. They heard his heart. And they welcomed him into their family. And it didn't change his pain by any means. He's still going to struggle with those feelings. But he felt, I think, a little closer in the body of Christ because that group wore their baptismal clothing 
And they loved him with tender-hearted kindness, making him feel like he was part of the family, walking in love. It was just what they were called to do. And it's not easy, is it? Not at all. Uh, We won't be there until the day that Jesus returns, finally figuring out how to do this consistently. As Luther says, it's a process, and we know no one journeys alone, and it's hard. It might be more up or down than up this week for you. But St. Luke, can I tell you one more time? You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit as people of God. You have been forgiven by the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, and you are absolutely loved by a Savior who cannot bear to not have you walking with him in his love each and every day. So I want to ask you one more time, St. Luke, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, say, we do renounce them. Absolutely, 100%. Thank you for that answer. As we live in those responses shaped by Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we actually get to inhabit that new reality that Jesus has brought us into in Ephesians chapter 4 and 5 for the sake of others. We are the church. So let's have a great time walking in love this week. In the name of Jesus, amen.